On the last episode of The Dead Letters, we discussed the letter F, an odd precursor to the modern TH digraph we now use to represent the THE sound made by those letters. However, during that episode I mentioned several times that F was not alone in this use and that it had a sibling that made an almost exact sound. Today, the time has come to cover the other TH twin, the letter THORN. Like many other letters covered in this series, the letter Thorn has Germanic origins, and much like Win, which we covered in the first episode of the series, it was in fact represented in the Scandinavian Elder Futhark. Currently, it is believed that it was originally used to represent the word giant. Interestingly, it is almost identical in appearance to the archaic Greek letter Sho, although the two are historically unrelated. Thorn was actually used alongside the letter F in Old English for some time. However, as we discussed in the previous video, Thorn would remain commonly used moving into the period of Middle English, while its counterpart would gradually vanish from the language. Thorn would even go on to usurp F's use as the abbreviation for the word that. Over time, however, much like the other letters featured in this series, Thorn would fall victim to several factors. In the 14th century, we begin to see the more modern digraph TH become more and more popular to represent the sound the. Although Thorn would manage to hang on for some time, albeit gradually changing. As the TH digraph began to see more and more use, Thorn was gradually changing in shape, becoming less distinctive with the ascending stem slowly disappearing until it became very similar in appearance to the old letter win, which had itself fallen out of use by this time. This iteration of the letter would be the longest lasting, hanging on all the way up until the first usage of movable type. At this time it morphed once again, being replaced on the printing press by Y of all letters. Now. Some of you may have just realized something. Tis ye old stereotypical use of the word the. Because ye instead of the. Like ye old. I, I, think, I think I made that point clear. I think you get it. That's right. Thorn became ye, which then became the. With the Protestant Reformation, the new form of the letter would see heavy usage in the first printing of the King James Bible in 1611 where it was used in the place of both the and that. This, however, would last only for a time, as the digraph, th, which had been competing with Thorn for centuries, finally took its current place as the accepted indicator of the sound. So, remember what I said about eth last episode? How, despite the series being called The Dead Letters, the case of eth was more like a missing persons case? Well, guess what happened to Thorn? That's right, Icelandic. However, while Eth managed to survive in both Icelandic and Faroese, Thorn today, however, is only found in Iceland, where it is the 30th letter of the Icelandic alphabet. And unlike the modern incarnation of Eth, Thorn never appears at the end of a word. A good example of this is the name of famed Icelandic athlete and strongman Hafthor Julius Bjornsson. So that covers the old THs, the history of the two and how they competed against each other to represent almost the exact same sound is interesting to say the least. However, as unusual as their story is, there is always something weirder. Next time we take a look at something a little more unusual, I'm talking Joch weird. Thank thee ever so much my friends for watching this video. If you are interested in donating to a good cause and are able to, I am currently featuring the donation page for Movember Foundation this month in the description of all my videos posted during November. If you are interested, the link will be located down in the description of this video. Every little bit helps and is greatly appreciated. And once again, my friends, thank thee ever so much for watching. And until we meet again, I bid thee farewell. <laughs>